Hello, we are with uh, Richard Rosso. My name is Manish Chan. I'm in Washington, D.C. at the office of the CSIS, a very well-known think tank in D.C. Uh, we are uh, fortunate to have uh, Richard Rosso, head of U.S.-India Policy Studies Center at CSIS. And we are going to be talking about uh, Prime Minister Modi's historic visit to the United States of America. Uh, P.A. Modi has just arrived in New York and uh, he's got a lot of meetings lined up with the top CEOs and corporate leaders in New York. He flies to Washington tomorrow and the next three days are going to be really, really power packed and will have enormous import for India-US partnership. So Mr. Rosso, uh, cutting through all this hype, uh, what do you think, where this visit will stand out? and in what ways it will be transformational. Well, there's two big areas where the governments have kind of teed up for major actions mm -hmm. during the visit. Number one is uh, doubling down on defense cooperation, mm -hmm. which is already on a really good trajectory, mm -hmm. but there's a lot more that has to be done in right. technology transfer. We want to make sure that uh, we have a shared vision of Indo-Pacific threats. Mm -hmm. India, of course, very concerned about what's happening uh, in the Indian Ocean and on its border, while the United States is more concerned with Pacific. Right. So defense will be integral, but also cooperation in emerging and strategic, strategic technologies. So when we talk about our shared concern that China today is, is trying to dominate global trade flows in areas like artificial intelligence and 5G, 6G, quantum computing, semiconductors, areas like that, we need to work together to make sure that our market size, our innovation uh, hubs are all working together to, uh, to make sure that we have great lines of communication, great trade, and that we're not going to be beholden to China to dominate these products in the future. Right. There, there's very big talk about the jet engine deal, you know. It's supposed to be the crown jewel of American high technology. Uh, so you think that deal is going through finally, or the, are there still some uh, ifs and buts there, you know? Well, that's for the governments to decide if they're going to be able to crystallize things, but all signs point towards uh, getting this uh, announced. Um, and uh, hopefully then uh, some, some kind of uh, real cooperation on developing the next generation will be taking place over the next couple of years. So it feels like we're in a pretty good place to get it, yeah. but of course we also had the announcement of a jet engine working group back in 2015 and it never fructified. So it's not over till it's over, but looking pretty good. Right. So going beyond the jet engine deal, you know, there is uh, the larger construct of co-development and co-production uh, on the defense side. Uh, you think we are moving in that direction, you know, because the earlier experiment of DTTI, DWTI uh, did not quite take off. What gives you optimism that this time we're moving in the right direction? Well, I don't have a ton of optimism, you know, because a lot of that technology is controlled by the U.S. private sector. Mm -hmm. So to try to push the private sector to expand and expedite technology transfer to India on non-commercial terms, mm -hmm. right. uh, it doesn't always work out that well. But the one area that I think you're going to see some announcement for this week as well looks at trying to co-develop technology more at the root level. Mm -hmm. It's not as exciting as when you right. talk about mm -hmm. high-end defense items, mm -hmm. but when we talk about getting our startups mm -hmm. and getting our academic communities to, to mm -hmm. collaborate, uh, ultimately it might be easier to co-develop some of that root IP mm -hmm. rather than expecting a mature uh, level of intellectual property be, to be shared with India on non-commercial terms. So keep an eye out for some higher education, some startup initiatives. Right. Uh, going beyond defense, you know, when we talk about critical technology, we're not really talking about defense. We are talking about a whole gamut of uh, technologies, especially for development of a country like India. Now, where uh, you know, and one of those uh, game-changing uh, technologies uh, is, is the semiconductors. You know, and and there is a big buzz about the semiconductor deal being signed. Uh, how realistic is it? Are we going ahead with it? What do you make out of that? Well, in the face of it, when you think about some of the challenges the Indian market still faces on attracting investors. Uh, labor flexibility, uh, the ability to access high-end raw materials, uh, electricity quality, uh, things like that. It would seem like the, the distance to frontier in attracting major semiconductor manufacturing mm -hmm. would be quite a ways off. But uh, you know, we've seen in the past, when India puts his mind to it, they've been able to jumpstart uh, partnerships and accelerate development mm -hmm. in sectors that had been uh, seen as uh, largely impossible. I think back to the early days when I started at the U.S. India Business Council, and you began to see the dawn of IT services trade. I mean, up until then, there wasn't an industry mm -hmm. that people looked at, at at India as kind of being world leading. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, a couple of years later, the United States is putting laws in place mm -hmm. to limit outsourcing because we're worried about India taking all of our tech jobs. Mm -hmm. So I've seen it before when India can take that big leap and move into areas that otherwise people hadn't been looking for. So semiconductors, the hill seems pretty high, but I've seen hills be conquered before. Some say that this visit by Prime Minister Modi is the next big deal after the historic nuclear deal of 
2015. Uh, and this is also about accelerating the rise of India. Do you think President Biden will take this opportunity uh, to make a grand statement about India's place in the world, to support India's candidacy for the United Nations Security Council, and going forward, you know, the underlying uh, thread about this accelerating India-US engagement is about the rise of India. How do you look back, the future trajectory of that? I think you'll hear a lot of platitudes, but the question is, what are the areas that are going to have concrete work streams? And like we talk about the UN Security Council, you know, I think there's a lot of the United States that don't think India should be on the Security Council. Mm -hmm. When we look at a lot of the global challenges that are primed in the United States, India is not there, mm -hmm. or actually is on the other side of the fence. You know, I think the votes that took place as India had one of the rotating seats on the Security Council after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So, you know, I think we'll say the right things, but concrete action to push for UN reforms in a significant, concerted way may be kind of lacking. Mm -hmm. We're looking for those spaces that here and now collaboration is critical. Mm -hmm. India has territory that is controlled today by China that you had before. India's neighbors like Bhutan are at un increasing undue influence from China. Mm -hmm. India sees the PLA Navy having an expanded presence in the Indian Ocean. So we look at the areas where here and now there is a real need to accelerate cooperation. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of platitudes about the future, about UN Security Council, things like that. But I think you're going to see a lot of concrete action items that are re reacting to the challenges and opportunities that we see today. Okay. Uh, in geopolitical terms, some say that this uh, visit by Prime Minister Modi has been orchestrated by the Biden administration to position India firmly as a counterweight against an aggressive China. How much of this is about curbing China? How much of this, you know, India relationship for the United States, where does it fit in the terms of the largest geopolitical strategic calculus? On defense and security, China is central. We may not say it every single time, although increasingly our leaders are willing to directly or indirectly hint that uh, China is really the angle for defense and security. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we talk about other areas of cooperation, our robust economic partnership and the, the opportunity to build that mm -hmm. out quite a bit in the future, when we talk about people-to-people -people connections, the Indian diaspora that's here that's doing incredible work at our universities and our medical institutions and our startups, um, you know, it really is terrific. And so I don't think companies wake up in every, th in every day and think, I'm a consumer products firm, all this India, China, Hubble, they don't care about that. They know India is a big market, a place to grow and manufacture. Indian companies are coming here. So certainly China on defense and security plays heavily. The other areas, we just there's just a lot of merit in it. Two big countries growing fast. Mm -hmm. Companies have got to take that opportunity to take advantage of it. You know, the world is watching this visit very closely. In, in your assessment, what would characterize it as success? What is the one or two big outcomes that will make it accepted as a big success? Well, I think uh, the, the couple of big outcomes, uh, if we do find direct pathways that get announced on the visit mm -hmm. to accelerate the sharing of advanced technology, India cares about that deeply. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, accelerating uh, uh, technologies, the intellectual property behind them for defense cooperation mm -hmm. is a critical standing point. Also, the United States has got to prove during this visit that we're reactive uh, to India's interest in South Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, one danger point that we've got is what happens if we both approach mm -hmm. uh, South Asian nations differently and at odds, and that becomes an area of friction. So I think the United States to talk about a robust security presence in the Indian Ocean, supporting India's interest of, in its own neighborhood, that's the other area too. If we have some big outcomes, I'm gonna be quite satisfied with. So okay. Death Tech and cooperation in India's neighborhood. Uh, thanks Richard Russo for sharing your valuable insights, your assessment. Thank you so much. Manish, thanks a lot. Thank you.